Holy cow, look how big this has gotten. Hey, Steve, how you doing? So I remember back in 07, uh, Phyllis and I were talking about this. Is Phyllis James a force of nature or what? My gosh. Woo. I've never been able to say no to Phyllis. And she said we should try to put on a women's conference. So we scrapped together about 100 people. And we sat around talking to each other. And now, about 11 years later, we have 1,500 people at this conference, the largest of its kind in Western United States. But knowing Phyllis, as I do, uh, she's going to be looking at T-Mobile next year, I think. Uh, so we got some work to do. Uh, I just wanted to lend my welcome uh, to you and to share my enthusiasm and commitment uh, to not only this conference, but more importantly, to the efforts under which uh, we're all embarking on. MGM has made a lot of progress over my 10 years as CEO, but uh, we're just getting started. It's not enough that we lead this industry as it, as it relates to gender equality. You probably heard the numbers that 44% of the managers of this company, of a company of 80,000 men and women, 44% of them are women. Pretty good. It's not enough that we appointed not only the first, but the second, and the third, and the fourth female president of a major Las Vegas Strip property. And it's certainly not enough that uh, we have such uh, outstanding board representation, of which I see two of my colleagues and my friends Secretary Alexis Herman and Rose McKinney-James on our board. It's just not enough. But at least we're on the right path. One way to further this goal is something we just announced, which I think for those of you in Nevada would be of particular importance. We've done something at MGM that's never been done before in the United States. We partnered up with the university system here, the system of higher education. And we're now giving to our MGM employees free, and I underline free, online degree and certification programs for all of our MGM employees. Now, why do we do this? Why do we spend so much time on these initiatives? Because we've known since our beginnings that these buildings, as pretty as they are, are only as good as the people that work in them. And as much as we can invest in our resources, we need to invest in our people. This was the legacy of our founder, Kirk Kerkorian, um, and this is the legacy of our company. And as long as I'm the CEO, we'll always do this. I'm often asked, as a middle-aged white guy, why do I care so much about this? Now, Natalie mentioned my mom. There's also my dad, who was in the seminary for three years. And luckily for me and my siblings, he bailed. <laughs> but we were taught something early about equality giving people a chance, giving those who have less than you uh, more than they have. I went to Wall Street many years later in 1984, and four years later I met a beautiful, intelligent, brilliant person who became my wife. I learned through her eyes how difficult it was for a woman to succeed, to prevail on Wall Street, that good old boy network that I spent 14 years working in. And so when Heather and I moved here now 20 years ago, my pitch to Heather was, well, honey, um, I know you're running global consumer products 
research at Merrill Lynch, you're one of the top females in the largest brokerage firm in America. How about like moving across the country to a place called Las Vegas to raise your kids? She says, I'm in, Jim, if you want to do it. We came out here and we said, well, we're leaving that good old boy network in Las Vegas. We're coming to Las Vegas. Guess what we found? A bigger good old boy network out here. It's just not right. And through her eyes and so many men and women that I've met that have inspired me along the way, I committed myself both 20 years ago and 10 years ago when I became the CEO to do whatever I could to further the cause of equality uh, in the workforce. And we're trying to do that. And it's a, I give ourselves an incomplete because we're tough graders. Leaders lead, folks. That's what they do. We're the leading company in the state. We're a leading voice in America about giving people an opportunity to lift themselves up, that pathway to the middle class, that opportunity to provide for their families. That's what MGM stands for. That's what we stand for here and everywhere we are in the world. That's why the folks of Springfield, Massachusetts, just last week, had tears of joy in their eyes because MGM invested almost a billion dollars into that community and hired 3,000 men and women, some of which had not had jobs for years, and were bringing hope back to one of America's great cities. And I'll leave you um, with a thought. And I think it's very appropriate today because tomorrow it would have been his birthday. And of course, I'm referring to my friend and an American hero, Senator John McCain. Senator McCain always stood for the rights of others. You could agree or disagree with his politics, but never could you ever disagree with his passion, his patriotism, his commitment to helping people around the world. And I learned a lot from that man about courage and commitment and doing what's not necessarily uh, easy, but what you care for. And I commit to you that as long as I can, I will do whatever I can to commit to the equality of women in the workforce, of what MGM can do to further the goals of men and women in America and around the world and to promote what's best about America, what's best about MGM throughout my global travels. And with that, I want to say thank you for being here this morning. Have a lot of fun, and I'll be in the audience and talk to you. Have a great morning.